Sheikh Yasser Qadi is in the throes of a total meltdown, and it's simultaneously sad and hilarious to watch. It's sad because when he publicly admitted that there are problems with the Muslim view of the preservation of the Quran, many of us developed instant respect for him. We said, here's a man who's willing to acknowledge the truth, even if it gets him into trouble. This man is worthy of our respect. For years, Muslim scholars and Muslim apologists have been lying to Muslims about the history of the Quran. Finally, someone admitted that there's a problem. We respected Qadi for that. So it's sad to see him flailing around like a man who's drowning simply because he acknowledged the truth. But it's also hilarious because of what he did after the interview that completely destroyed the respect that we briefly had for him. After the interview, Qadi started throwing tantrums, backtracking, blaming Islamophobes for everything, blocking comments, and now filing false copyright complaints to get YouTube to take down videos that draw attention to what he said. In other words, Qadi obliterated the respect that he had gained so that now Muslims view him as a traitor for admitting that there isn't just one Quran, and non-Muslims view him as a coward for backing down from an angry mob and for trying to cover up the epic dumpster fire that he and Muhammad Hijab created. If you haven't been following these recent events, let me briefly describe the interview. Muhammad Hijab was interviewing Sheikh Yasser Qadi live, and Hijab started asking questions about Qadi's views on the history of the Quran. It was very, very clear that Qadi did not want to discuss his views in public. He kept saying over and over and over again, this isn't something we should discuss in public. But no matter how many times Qadi tried to avoid the issue, Hijab just kept pushing. Hijab was relentless. By the end, viewers only knew two things. One, there are all kinds of problems with the standard Muslim story about the history of the Quran. And two, if Sheikh Yasser Qadi had any solutions, you weren't getting them without taking his class. When you do a deep dive is when things get very, very awkward and difficult. The most advanced of our scholars, they're not quite fully certain how to solve all of the unanswered yeah. questions in there. After we get off this phone call, me and you, let's have a number of discussions, no problem. Beyond this, honestly, I have no problem. We'll have a discussion or take my class. Not surprisingly, those of us who believe that Muslims need to hear the truth about their corrupt book started sharing clips from that interview. I first saw some clips on the Islam Critiqued channel, but very soon everyone was discussing Sheikh Yasser Qadi's demolition of the Quran. Muhammad Hijab received so many complaints from Muslims that he deleted the discussion from his channel. Yasser Qadi backtracked and pulled the Islamophobia card on his Facebook page. After a recent interview with Brother Muhammad Hijab, some missionaries and anti-Muslim propagandists have read their own prejudice into our very brief discussion. Some of them have twisted my words to suit their agenda. While Muslim scholarship has pioneered Quranic studies for centuries and continues to do so, the fact remains that we all agree on the demonstrably proven fact that the Quran has been preserved in its entirety, word for word, and that we believe that all of the ten recitations kirat, of the Quran are revealed from Allah. To see such Islamophobes try to read in an argument that no one amongst us ever made in order to prove their incorrect narrative is only demonstrating the unethical tactics they resort to. That's right, we were twisting his words when he said that there are holes in the narrative. And it's very clear to you and to every single very advanced student and specialist that the standard narrative has holes in it. That's what I'm going to say. We were twisting his words when he repeatedly warned Muhammad Hijab that they shouldn't be discussing the preservation of the Quran in public. And I would never bring it up in public. And I don't think it is wise to bring it up in public. Why didn't I say it? Because it should not be said in public. You will not find one lecture of mine about this issue. It should never be brought up in public. This is not something you discuss amongst the masses, Yaqi. It's not wise. We were twisting his words when he compared the Islamic view of the history of the Quran to the emperor in the emperor's new clothes. 
when you go to academia, they don't have that red line. And they're going to just, you know, the, 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 the famous story of the emperor with no clothes. They're going to just point out, no, that doesn't make any sense. Well, that's not true. And this and that. And they'll bring issues, which I'm not going to mention explicitly, that you know are true because they're in your own books. They're not inventing anything new. If you've never read the story, the emperor was a naked moron. According to Sheikh Yasser Qadi, the Muslim view of the history of the Quran is stupid and naked. It's all our fault, ladies and gentlemen. That's why Muhammad Hijab had to delete the footage. I do find it interesting that Qadi complains about the unethical tactics of Islamophobes when he's the one who's displaying deceptive, unethical behavior. Not only did he close the comments section of his video to silence the Muslims who were saying that he was increasing their doubts about the Quran, he also started filing false copyright complaints against videos that showed the world what he said. Two days ago, I posted a video titled Secrets of the Quran featuring Sheikh Dr. Yasser Qadi. The video contained a bunch of clips of Qadi saying, this should never be discussed in public. Each of them followed by Jack Nicholson shouting, you can't handle the truth. Since that's basically what Qadi was saying. Yesterday, I received this YouTube copyright takedown notification. Who ordered YouTube to take down my video? Yasser Qadi. Qadi claims that I violated his copyright. The problem for Qadi is that my video doesn't come within a thousand miles of violating his copyright because copyright law includes an exception for what's called fair use. If you're using short sections of a much larger work for purposes of education and criticism, you're protected under fair use. That's exactly what I did. Does Dr. Qadi know about fair use? Of course he does. He's a scholar. Every time a scholar quotes another person's book or lecture, he's relying on the doctrine of fair use. Dr. Qadi knows what fair use is. He knows I'm allowed to use clips from his interview. He knows I'm allowed to expose his claims. He knows I'm allowed to criticize his claims. He knows I'm allowed to make fun of his claims. And yet, he filed a false legal complaint to YouTube anyway, insisting that I violated his copyright. What does this mean? It means that Sheikh Yasser Qadi knowingly lied to YouTube in order to get my video temporarily removed. The video will be restored. I've already submitted the counter notification and said that I'm completely willing to go to court over this. If Qadi decides to take it to court, the case would be dismissed on day one with prejudice and Qadi would have to pay my legal fees due to the frivolous nature of the claim. So, Qadi is simply lying in an effort to put a temporary band-aid on the injuries he received during his recent train wreck. Why would he do this? Only one reason. The man is a coward and a narcissist. He can't deal with criticism. He can't deal with controversy. And now, even his fellow Muslims are mocking him for not being able to deal with the controversy that he caused. And two, they can't handle controversy. Qazi Saab, Yasser Qazi, he, look, when he's being asked, Halloween, no, 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 too controversial, won't say Halloween is permissible. Oh, uh, 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 Merry Christmas, uh, 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 no, top, 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 top. too controversial, too controversial. Can you clearly say music is not haram? No, 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 no. Too controversial to be clear, you know, too controversial, you know, this one, this one, not nice, you know. <laughs> he doesn't want to discuss controversial issues, but then he says the most controversial thing he can possibly say. The first controversy he wants to begin with <laughs> is the Quran is preserved. <laughs> What is going on here? I mean, is that the controversy you want to begin with? <laughs> that, you know, things like Merry Christmas is too controversial. Halloween is too controversial. So you want to begin with that the Quran is not preserved. <laughs> the, the backbone of Islam.
If a Muslim scholar can't handle controversy and criticism, do you have any idea how hard it must be for him to watch his fellow Muslims laughing at him? Yasser Qadi Saab, what he does is he decides to just be very open. <laughs> and he decides to say, well, you know what? I'm going to just pour my heart out and say that we've got huge problems with the Quran, yeah? But then what makes it worse is he doesn't give the solution. Like he keeps saying, this is something we shouldn't be discussing in front of people. Shouldn't be discussing this in front of people. But then he carries on discussing it, <laughs> but only discussing the problem part. And when it comes to the solution, he says... Uh, well, you know, this is really complicated. Why don't you go on my course? Why don't you go on my course? And, you know, I had a hundred people on it and join my paid course. And what I'll do is I'll take you through the answer. <laughs> you know, when the person's asking just to kind of dramatize the whole thing, would you be able to write some a Quran that looks like the Quran today? Oof, that's a very complex question. Oof. Oof, yeah, but a, but a complicated. Yeah, this one had a so alone. Oof, oof. <laughs> Muslim channels have posted hundreds of hours of my videos on their channels. There are Muslim channels that only exist to attack our videos. How many copyright complaints have I ever sent to YouTube? Zero. Why? Because the Muslims are clearly using the clips to criticize me and my claims, and they're allowed to do that. Suddenly, we get to shake Yasser Qadi, and we can't use video clips of him. He'll run to YouTube. Please, YouTube, please help me. They're making fun of me. Will you protect me from criticism? Not for long. One way or another, whether Qadi comes to his senses and withdraws his false complaint, or whether he gets laughed out of court, either way, the video is going back up. And we will celebrate when it does. Yasser Qadi and his ideology and his views are not exempt from criticism. We're not under Sharia, and I definitely ain't his dimmy. Never have been. Never will be. Yasser Qadi, liar, coward, narcissist. But take his course because he's got the answers. <laughs>